Why would he go back knowing what was waiting for him? Listen, it's a, it's a very complicated question and it's, it's challenging for me even when I have to think about it and consider it. Um, first and foremost, I think the calculus about whether to go back or not would have been different had this war already been launched or the escalation of the war already been underway. He went back before the war was a thing. No one thought it would happen. That's the first thing. People often talk about a, a sort of um, uh, um, a savior complex. He wanted to be the guy to go and save the country in spite of his you know, certain detainment. Maybe that's part of it. Um, but at the end of the day, I think if Alexei were sitting here, what he might offer is the thought that he frames himself as the moral leader of the nation, the leader of the opposition, and it is his mission to get as many people as possible out on the streets to protest. Even if he has to die for it? I think he's trying to set an example. And what he would say is, how can I ask people to go protest if I'm sitting safe in Berlin or Vilnius or Paris or wherever? He wants to be an example and show Russians that they can be brave and they can be courageous and strong. It's, it's, it's a deeply upsetting and sad context, but at the end of the day, it's the decision made between Navalny and his higher power, and whether you agree with him or not, you, you must admire the courage it took to make that decision. Do you see it as part of your life's mission now to make sure the world doesn't forget him? I think I'm forever tied to this guy uh, and his family, um, and I, I happen to, to care about them very much. I've become quite close with his wife and children over the course of our awards campaign and, and the promotion of the film, and, and they were just, you know, uh, sharing the dance floor, tearing up the dance floor at my wedding a few days ago, mm. and it was really special for all of us that they were there, and it was very meaningful. Um, but of course, when it comes to Navalny specifically, my ultimate dream for all of this is to be able to show him the film, travel to Moscow in the hypothetical Russia of the future when Putin is gone, and there's a very, very different political headwind in that country, and I can show him the movie that we made. You anticipated my next question. I was going to ask you about that. Yes. Do you see, you, do you see a day when you two will be able to shake hands and show your movie together to people? Well, listen, things look really bleak right now. They sure do. But, you know, there's that old expression, the night is darkest just before the dawn, and I believe in that. And if you spend enough time with Navalny, one of his values that I think is cornerstone to who he is, is his sense of optimism and hope. He is oriented towards optimism and being hopeful. And I, you know, you can't help be inspired by that. So in the spirit of Navalny, I have hope that he will survive this ordeal. He will outlast Putin and I'll get to shake his hand again and, and we'll get to see the movie.